This game has all the things I hate. Needlessly sexualized tiny child class, extortionately expensive pay to win cash shop, completely irrelevant meandering plot where you are the super special magical chosen one and can fix everyone else's problems. And yet, even with all of this terribleness, it's actually surprisingly good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome! I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMOs I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff, and ring the bell for all future videos. And the usual shout out to all the Patreon supporters and Twitch subs who keep the channel alive. More on this at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we are playing Aura Kingdom, a free-to-play cutesy anime MMO published by Area Games and now somehow related to Gamergo because it's a mediocre MMORPG on the verge of dying. Of course Gamergo are somehow involved. The simplest way to explain what this game is about is to show you the Steam autoplay video which advertises the new gender. Not race, not class. Gender. And that gender is... Chibi. Okay then. Launch the game, sign up, and it stutters a bit and doesn't crash. But then the splash screen appears and I kinda wish it had crashed. The first thing that really stands out is there's no sound. At all. Sound, both background music and effects, are turned off by default, and you can only turn them on from the main menu accessed from the game. So the opening is completely silent. You start off by choosing a class, and to the game's credit, there are a surprising amount to choose from, and they're all labelled as tank, healer, melee DPS, or range DPS, which is nice, and some of these look really cool. I kind of like the almost cell-shaded graphical style. It's flashy, but not overwhelming. Still detailed enough to appreciate what's going on. Now this class looks cool. A ranged DPS that fights with a guitar using musical notes. Oh hell yes, let's be that. And nope, it's a premium class. Well, that's a shame. Okay, you know what? Let's try out the new class they advertised earlier. The Star Caller. Ah, okay, this was the chibi class. You can't be any other gender, you are chibi, deal with it. First issue, you can spin your character model by holding left click and dragging the mouse, but you spin at light speed. Look how damn fast the model spins with only a tiny movement of the mouse. I know this isn't mechanically important, but god damn that's a lot of spinning. Now we choose our Eidolon, a magical companion which accompanies us throughout the game. You've got a few choices, but I'm going with Extreme Blade Head Unicorn. One issue, however, when you do this. On the left hand side there's a text box with some info about your selected Eidolon, but there's an advert for the game's Discord channel floating over it, and you can't move the Discord advert, and you can't get rid of it, and there's no way I'm clicking on it because can you imagine? Being in a Discord of hardcore Aura Kingdom fans, I don't think I want that. The game starts and we are instantly thrown into a quest dialogue screen. Kind of a strange way to start your game. Quite a few windows at odd angles, not really the smoothest transition from character creation to gameplay, but okay. Anyway, W and S move forward and backward, A and D swing the camera around, you can also left click to move and spacebar is jump, but as we'll see later, you don't need to jump because you can just climb sheer surfaces by walking at them. First on, the audio is still off, so I open the menu and everything is muted by default. Why? I turn it back on and we get some ambience at least. Before I start, the screen seems quite busy, quite cramped. The hotbars are actually overlapping each other. Some text is spilling from the boxes, and this is natively how it opens. And what is this tiny thin line on the right hand side about halfway up? I'd assume this is where an active quest list would be, but it's about a line two pixels thick and clicking on it, yeah, starts an auto run to the next quest. Is this a glitch? So I fiddle with the settings and get the game running in 1080 native, and now things are looking better. We have a quest right at the start. Ah, brilliant, an intro quest. Let's read some dialogue. Right, I need to use my skills to show an attitude. And the game says I can open the skill list with K. So I need to respond to this character with a skill and show attitude. Okay, no problem, that's just an emote response quest. I can do this. So I open the skills list with K. And there the skills are. Maybe I'll have a look in the general skills. Yep, there they are. All of the emotes. So I try a few. And nothing happens. No real effect on the quest there. I make sure I'm clicking on the NPC. I've got them targeted. And what does the provoke emote do? Oh god, oh no, why did she bend over so far? Oh no, why is her skirt so short? Oh god, I'm going on another list, aren't I? Designers, please, if you want to add a little girl class to your game, that's fine, but don't put her in a miniskirt by default. Some of us don't want to go to jail. Okay, I'm gonna level with you. This is the first quest, and I'm actually stuck. 
The quest needs me to respond with a skill. I have opened the skill menu as the text box has told me to and I've got the emotes selected and they're not doing anything. I've typed happy, sad, angry, nothing worked. I've done all the dances and there are a hell of a lot of dances and look in the top right the icon for sit. So I try sit and nothing. I even run around for a bit, seeing if I've missed something obvious, and what I discover when running around is the camera is way too low. Look, this is the standard camera angle, and it just so happens to be the perfect upskirt angle, and I'm not super happy with that. So I'm going to be keeping the camera as high as we can as we play. And now, after 10 minutes of clicking random things, I complete the first quest. You do need to use a skill to show an attitude. And even though the game says open your skills menu with K, this is not what you need to do. See the hot bar at the bottom? See how the numbers 1 and 2 have emotes on them? You must perform one of those emotes from the hot bar. Not from the skills menu the game tells you to open. The hot bar. To finish the quest. With the toughest first quest ever finished, you can open the quest log with L. The quest log is actually laid out really nicely. And clicking on your next objective, yep, starts up the good old auto run. I know you're meant to be a chibi, but why is your character so low down in the chat box space? There is so much empty space above them. Can we get these characters a box or something to stand on? Just move them back up so I can see them. And why, good god, why does your quest tracker list on the right hand side have a horizontal scroll function? Just make the display bigger. You can fit this all on. It's saving like a fraction of screen space to scroll left and right. You don't need this scroll. It seems like it would be more complex to program a scroll than just fitting the whole quest name on the quest list. So anyway, we get our first weapon, a Draco Puppet, which is this class's main combat style. And combat is actually awesome, as we'll see later. The game tells me to open my inventory to equip my weapon. Which key do you think opens the inventory? Did you say I? Because you're wrong. I opens the cash shop. Right, that's a bit of a sneaky trap there, seeing as no other MMO in history has bound the cash shop to I, but we are here now, so let's explore. There are already multiple premium currencies with odd exchange rates that I can see. This is a psychological trick to make it harder to track in-game cost against actual monetary cost by filtering it through several different levels of maths. You've got rubies and area points. And you buy rubies for area points and area points for money. Here's the buy screen. You can see one cent is one area point. And there is precisely no reason to buy in bulk because they've forgotten to add any sort of enticing discount to do that. Knowing that one area point is one cent, we can see these cute little bunny ears cost $29.99. $30 for some cosmetic headgear. But look, this dress, this magical dress, clearly made of spider silk and wishes, costs $50. Five zero. Fifty. You could buy The Witcher 3 for that. That's a full priced game. $50. For a cosmetic dress, I leave the shop because it's making me sad and I continue questing. I'm trying to read all the dialogue, but it reads like bad fan fiction. I'm talking Tumblr levels of my first fantasy fan fiction levels of bad. They don't bother showing character reactions despite having graphics, they just explain them. And the chat box is a mix of description and spoken responses. It's awful. It's hitting all of the terrible tropes. I'm amazed we haven't had eyes described as orbs yet or been told someone smirked at everything. Some games don't call it an inventory, they call it a backpack. So I press B, seeing if this opens it, and it does open the window I wanted to, but it's not called backpack, it's still called inventory, despite needing B to open, which is just confusing. I'm sent to kill some rats, and so combat begins, and honestly, combat on the Starcaller class is really good fun. Your weapon is a tiny teddy bear, which can turn into either a hammer or a grenade launcher, depending on what you want to use. And whenever you smack an enemy with the hammer, you build up melee points. And whenever you use the gun, you get ranged points, shown by the little winged icon on the left. And when the icon is full of points, whatever variation you filled it with, you can absorb the power and it enhances all of those attacks for a short time. And if you can keep the meter equal between melee and range, you can perform a powerful sky laser attack. And honestly, combat is just surprisingly satisfying. The hammer feels solid. The gun feels chunky. The animations are flashy, but not overwhelming or garish. It's responsive. This actually feels really nice to play with. 
I kill some stuff, gather some flowers, and I'm thinking, you know what, visually this game's actually really nice. The environment is lovely, the enemies look great, the combat animations were fluid. This is decent. And just as I'm relaxing into it and appreciating what it does well, I level up and I get some new skills. But this also makes all of my current skills duplicate on the hotbar. I have replicated hot skills. What a strange bug. This quest has me drink some tea and then the screen goes all dark and we get this ominous text. Ooh, plot development. Okay, graphically, especially environmentally, this is really nice. I love how fleshed out this feels. The edges of the path feed into the natural lay of the land. There are lovely blues and purples and bright oranges mixing with the muted greens and browns of the floor. This feels handcrafted. There are loads of small touches like foliage and tree roots and skeletons and flowers and mud clumps and vines and there's a lot going on in the environmental design and all of it is just really nice to look at. The lighting, the sight lines, the waterfalls, the pools, the placing of objects feels handcrafted and boutique and it feels pleasant. The biggest issue with the ambience is the music. It switches from diegetic environmental ambience to background music with no warning and it's just really jarring and it actually makes getting immersed in the scene a lot harder. Just have a listen to the switch and work out which one you prefer. So we find this dying dude, and he needs some water, so we go and kill some foxes and then use their hides to craft a water skin, and this is great. It's introducing the crafting aspect within a quest that requires crafting, and it links crafting to something we've already done and understand. In this case, combat, showing us how the game systems all interact. We are collecting the crafting materials from the enemies and using them to make something and interacting with a quest person. This is brilliant. This is a great way to introduce new mechanics into a game, link them to an old mechanic. We heal the almost dead dude and he introduces himself as Eben, and then we get attacked by two nipple rings attached to a giant red blob. I see, a mini boss, and it's using red AoE attacks. Oh, fantastic, okay, I'm ready for a fight, let's do this, and it's dead. Wow, that was, that was extremely disappointing. And what do you think we get for killing the mini boss? That's right, we get an ostrich. So this ostrich is Eben's mount. We load up his wounded body onto it and send him back to camp. I also explore the Envoy Level Up Grid. You can spend level up points to choose the skills you want to increase. It's a decent enough system which allows for, I'm going to assume, freedom of builds in the long run. Back at the village, another quest needs us to choose another attitude response. I'm feeling my character is a bit bossy and would stand her ground, so I choose the more aggressive of the responses, and my character then says in a text box above her head, I hope you go to hell after death. Okay, goddamn game, wow, I was expecting like a little bit of attitude, not an actual curse. Chill. So we need five antlers, which means it's time for some reindeer death. And as for the UI, once at the correct resolution, it's fine. It's graphically consistent, it's not flashy or garish, it's understandable, windows can be moved and resized, yet yeah, this is fine. And again, combat is great. I'm actually annoyed there hasn't been more combat yet, because this is so far the best part of the game. But again, just as I'm getting into it, another issue. I open the character sheet, and I equip some new armor, and my character does not graphically change at all. Because it seems armor doesn't have any graphical power. Only your costume does, and you start with the basic dress costume. You can take that off, but I feel if I did that, I'd be fast-tracked onto even more lists. So we're going to be rocking the Alice in Wonderland look for a little bit yet. This quest needs me to kill some pink butterflies, and it leads me to this enemy, which are neither pink nor butterflies. And I also put some into cages, because it's not enough to kill. We must also subjugate. Every single MMO ever made includes some reference to RuneScape, and I'm going to assume this quest of Gather Cabbages was a homage to that game. Back to the village, check up on Eben, then another NPC, then another. Seriously, most of the early game seems to be passing notes back and forth, which sucks because the combat is terrific and the travel is not. I feel there is a serious pacing issue with the early game. 
So Eben needs a special needle to alleviate some curse, and this needle is dropped by these rage thorns, and the quest says kill rage thorns for a spiky ball. Well, okay then, come rage thorns, give me your spiky balls. On my quest for the spiky balls, I actually almost die. Like, I legitimately take a lot of damage without realising. And that's awesome. I guess you can actually die in the game, and I do need to pay attention. I like that. It means combat feels engaging and dangerous. Next up, kill some sheep. And honestly, if the game said I just need to spend the next four hours killing stuff with a mix of melee and ranged attacks, I'd be okay with that. I wonder if I'll unlock any of the dungeons. I hope so. It would be interesting to see what they're like. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. That's my goal. Unlock and finish the first dungeon. This quest needs me to eat a kebab and then the screen goes dark and gets more ominous writing. Are you going to die here? Okay, that's a bit dark, game. I'm not sure what you're going for here. So far, both times I've drank or eaten, the screen has faded out. You know in Baldur's Gate when you go to sleep and see visions of the future? Is it like that, but with food? You know my main issue with the early game so far? It's turned into Help Eben the Fetch Quest. I don't feel like an important character. My entire adventure now revolves around him. I feel right now Eben is the main character and I am nursing him back to health. I kill some goofy looking imps and think, hey, a waterfall. I wonder if there's a hidden treasure behind it. So I run at it and I clip halfway up the waterfall. What? So it turns out some vertical surfaces aren't actually vertical. They just look vertical, because you have no issue running straight up them. You can actually clip right to the top of this waterfall by just running at it. Terrific physics there, game. Just terrific. Saving Eben sees us journey into the holy magical tree, and not only am I loving the environmental ambience of the entire game so far, which is a given because the environmental ambience is stellar, we now get one of my favourite aspects in MMOs, a puzzle. I'm being genuine, I love puzzles in games. Clicking on a mushroom turns it and the two mushrooms directly next to it on or off. I absolutely adore when they put logic puzzles in games. This makes me happy. Solve the puzzle, visit the holy tree, step into some magical pillar of light and get lifted up and then some evil dude who looks like the love child of Alucard from Netflix's Castlevania and Gaius Van Belzar appears and tries to steal the super special awesome magical power of the holy tree. But Eben jumps in the way to sacrifice himself and stops the dude and then the dude just kind of walks off. I guess he had a kind of one shot magical spell, now he needs to go and have a nap. Unfortunately, the emotional impact of this scene is lessened by the glitching that happens in the chat box and how Eben's model resets to kneeling from standing every time you click to move to the next bit of chat and it looks a little bit dumb. With the magic protected, we now get our idol on. The unicorn is mine. And Eben dies, for real this time, which is sad, but I mean, come on, we've got a sweet ostrich and a unicorn from the deal, that's a pretty good trade. The unicorn has an attack menu and you can toggle them on or off, I keep them all on and hope he's useful, we will find out later. I swear to god, 90% of the early game is just travel and talk, there's so little actual gameplay. This is the most important part for retaining new players and you filled it with go to a place and talk to someone with badly written forgettable NPC dialogue. On to a new area, open the map. Map's fine, by the way. You've even got drop-down menus, find NPCs or enemies, and a little boot to auto-move to them, which is a handy-dandy tool to have. I talk to Kant, then Safe, then Lindo, then wonder if these NPCs were named by someone who had never met anyone with an actual real name before. The plot also gets onto something about an evil empire, but right now we need to pick some zesty lemons, then go and have a chat with an owl, then kill some parrots. I mean, at least the game is consistent in its commitment to being quirky. Have a quick check of all the in-game menus. They're all laid out nicely. Nothing wrong here. The Eidolon menu looks like every single MMORPG pet menu ever. There's attacks and upgrades and level up bits. It's basically legally different Pokemon or pets from WoW. Here's a cool feature. You can unlock custom UI skins by completing various challenges in-game. I like this. It's a personal graphical choice that only you benefit from, but it still makes you feel accomplished. Apart from the GM Wish override, which is literally gained from Buy the GM Wish. And the UI is green with money and a small graphic of a credit card, so at least they are self-aware. Let's try combat now. I've got my unicorn and... Oh, god damn, the unicorn is a beast! This thing does some serious damage. Okay, this can work. Guys finishing off enemies and then taking chunks out of new ones. Go unicorn! 
I know I've said this before, but the ambience in this game, visually, is brilliant. The graphical designer is clearly very skilled. It's consistent, the scale is held well, the natural landscape flows, the flora and fauna fit, the man-made structures respect the natural lay of the land. The colour palette is well chosen, it's just visually gorgeous. It's a real shame the music doesn't complement it as well as it could do. It's just generic anime plinky plonky background music, sometimes ambience. It's not bad music, it's just nowhere near the level of quality of the visual. We go to kill some wolves and find some pure blood. This is the first kinda grindy quest. The wolves drop vials of blood, then you open the vial to find either clear or muddy, and it's about a half and half mix. But the grind is an almost welcome change at this point because I've got a load of new combat skills to test out and it's so much fun to blow stuff up. And then smack it with a giant hammer. If you can't tell, I'm a big fan of hybrid classes. Use the wolf blood to unlock this portal and go and rescue some ivy-bound owls from this cave. Actually kind of dark when the imps are all chanting, pluck the feathers, pluck the feathers. Yeah, that's a bit, uh, that's a bit creepy. Free the owl, escape some crystal explosions all throughout the cave and report to the village and then just keep following the quest line. At this point, I'm thinking my motivation to keep playing is very superficial. I'm enjoying the experience on the surface. It's pretty, it's not offensive, the combat is enjoyable enough, it looks good, it feels good, it sounds okay, and I'm not not having fun. But I don't feel a real connection or an emotional reason to keep going in any way. I know this isn't the type of game to care about that. They are throwaway NPCs, they're expendable companions. It's not a deep, involved, plot-driven game. I mean, right now, I'm happy enough to continue playing, but if this was my main MMO, I know once another flashier, more mechanically refined game comes along, I'd leave. There's nothing connecting me to the game's world beyond the pretty graphics. I tried the world chat feature, but it's a game where you need a megaphone, a premium consumable item used up every time you broadcast a message, and I don't have one. It's a shame, because I was hoping to find people to chat to. I have not seen anyone new so far. God damn, the environment truly is gorgeous. And the camera work is great. I mean, unless you happen to have the camera on the exact water level, then it does this. Every time a good moment happens, the game reminds you that it sucks in its own magical way. Kill some tiny dragons, get some quest rewards, and while I'm grinding this quest line to get to a dungeon, let's just read some reviews and see what people think of the game in general. 319 hours. Good. 2,443 hours. Don't do it. It's a safe bet. Not a hardcore MMORPG like the big names, but still enough to have a good time. 649 hours. Not recommended. The game is great. 1,312 hours. Most easiest MMORPG I have played. This is similar like Sword Art Online games. And this review, which I'm going to be honest, worries me a little bit. 19,823 hours. After 15,000 hours, I give this game a solid 3 out of 10. Back in the game, having rescued the owls from the evil vine demons, I'm now trying to secure an alliance with the rabbit kingdom by capturing some rabbits and using them as blackmail. Just... Just go with it, okay? This is where the plot's got to. Just roll with it. I also try the party search function. See if I can find a dungeon my level. And while it does show a lot of main story dungeons available, there are none for my level. So this is the plan. Power level to level 20H, the first dungeon, and then see what it's like. Because I'm a PvE guy, so if it's mostly combat, I might even like it. Oh, also I've unlocked a special move, which actually causes a small in-game cinematic to happen whenever I use it, and yeah, this just feels really awesome. Combat is so far fun. Mixing attacks is great. It feels rewarding, and knowing that I'm filling that meter up with each attack is giving me that pseudo-combo feeling. Every attack matters and links and combined, so I've got four levels to grind out. Let's do this! Oh, another main questline boss, an evil demon queen haunting some ruins. Let's do this, and she's dead in one hit. Okay, some feedback game, and I'm going to try and put this as politely and as gently as I can. Your mini-bosses are shit. Make them harder. I arrive at the first major city to be greeted by an absolute wall of lag. God damn, this is laggy. I hope I am not here long. Have a quick chinwag with the Pope, and then set off to distribute some flyers to people. But the game doesn't check who, so you can give the same NPC all six flyers and still finish the quest. And finally, four hours in, we get a voiced tutorial, and it's actually not bad. 
Use fortification scrolls to enhance the attributes of your equipment. This process consumes Gaia fragments. You can obtain Gaia fragments by disassembling weapons and armor. Right-click a fortification scroll to open the fortification window. Drag the piece of equipment you want to improve to the open slot. You will see its current status. A failed fortification will add a few points to the item's potential. If that reaches 100, the item will raise by one level. A successful fortification will increase the item's attack or defense. Have fun fortifying your equipment. Okay, honest feedback, the voiceover was quality, the actress was good, the visuals matched. My only input would be, have the player do something instead of just explaining a system to them in an info dump. If you have the player actually follow through the system or have a voiced NPC and you let them learn by doing, that's usually the best way to teach someone something and have them see the relevance of it issue I've discovered with the map. You can click and drag the map around, but when you zoom in it will always snap back to center on your character marker. Game devs, note, your map should zoom in wherever the player's cursor currently is. I explore around a bit and find the first dungeon. I even run into the door to open the menu and no, it's not listed. Seems level 28 is the minimum level to get in, so let's get grinding. Killing these stone golems is actually quite fun, because they have a lot of health and do some decent damage to me, and this isn't just a face roll fight, and I actually genuinely die after aggroing too many enemies, so death just sends you back to the nearest town. That seems pretty fair to me. This game is actually quite good. Like, it's not brilliant, but it's not bad. I mean, the auto pathfinding even works across maps. It helps you find the nearest teleport to another map. So navigation is pretty damn easy from anywhere to anywhere else. I know normally the weapon and armor vendor NPCs in MMOs are useless, but this shop does actually have a weapon better than mine, but it's also level 28. So I'm going to grind 28, grab the weapon, and then go to the dungeon. And while quests give a load of experience, I've actually exhausted all the mainline quests up to this point, and grinding enemies, my only reliable option, does not give a lot of experience. I've only got to make 3% to the next level, and it is slow going. I can imagine this becomes a grind fest when you run out of quests. Hit level 28, grab the new weapon from the shop, and make my way back to the dungeon. So in the dungeon, camera's a bit awkward and tight in the enclosed space and the ambient music and the actual music do that thing of starting and stopping randomly, but despite the flaws, the dungeon experience, even solo, was actually really fun. A few smaller mobs to mop up first, some directions to take, and then some mini-bosses with AoE attacks, timings, movements. I had fun here. And the final boss of the dungeon was actually a challenge. I had to drink potions, I had to dodge, I had to use my cooldowns. I enjoyed this fight. So let's wrap it up. Aura Kingdom 1, it's actually pretty high quality when you look at it. The graphics are super stylized and really consistent, and personally I found the environments stunningly beautiful. The music isn't bad, but it doesn't reach the same level of quality as the visuals. The class variation at the start seemed impressive, and the combat, at least on the Starcaller I played, was really satisfying. The plot sucked, but it's an anime MMO. The plot isn't the focus. It's a mechanics-based game, not an emotional game. And mechanically, it's not awful. The cities felt alive, even though there were no players, because enough NPCs were walking around doing their own thing, and there's a load of skill systems I didn't even try to get into. The menus all seemed polished. This has clearly been made with a high level of skill. I mean, the cash shop opens with the I key, and there's a $50 dress, so it's definitely not good, but it's not bad. And that's my issue. It's not bad enough for a mocking joke score. But it's also not great enough for an endearing joke score either. It's just a perfectly acceptable, probably seven out of 10 game. And when I checked Steam, they agreed. Seven out of 10, that was the rating. So I guess that should be mine as well. Aura Kingdom, seven out of 10. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Thank you for watching. Another massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only a pound a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.